In this tutorial, we are going to manually update a WooCommerce email template and add more data to the WooCommerce emails that are sent out after someone purchases something on your WooCommerce site. We're going to be doing the email that goes to the admin specifically, but you can do the same thing with emails that go to the customers as well. Just make sure you do a lot of testing, which you're going to see how to do in this video, and then you'll be creating highly customized emails in WooCommerce. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you have not done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. Before we start editing our emails, let's first see what we're working with. So let's go to WooCommerce orders. I've set up a demo product. I've submitted a demo order. And this is a product here, Scooby Snacks for Donkeys. It has an image, an SKU, and a price. And I've gone ahead and just added myself as an order manually instead of WooCommerce. And when I do that, I get an email as the owner of the site saying this person just ordered this. And the person who ordered it gets an email saying you just ordered this. And the person who ordered also gets an email saying you just ordered this. And you can resend those if you want to by going to the order like we did here. Go to order actions, click on resend new order notification. That will go to the site owner or email invoice that will go to the purchaser. So I'm going to resend new order notification, click on this little arrow, and that sends it. That'll go to whatever email address is set as the main admin for the WooCommerce store. For me, this site's hosted locally, so emailing out is disabled, but it goes into the email inside of my local hosting environment, which is local by Flywheel. There's a tutorial for that on my channel as well. Link to it in the card up above and the description down below if you want to create local sites really easily. Local by Flywheel is a great option, and it's free. So here's the email. I'm going to click on it to open it. And this is what we are working with, the standard WooCommerce email design. A previous tutorial on this channel shows you how to customize the appearance of this email using a plugin. I've linked to that in the card up above and in the description down below if you want to check out that video. And what's great is you can customize the design using that video. Then we can customize the content of the email with what I show you in this video. You can do some of the content customization in that previous video as well. But what we're going to do is customize the actual data inside of this table. And you can't do that using the design plugin I showed you in the previous tutorial. We're going to do this directly in the email templates. So let's get started on that. Let's go back to the dashboard. First, I'm going to show you the most basic place to edit emails. Let's go to settings under WooCommerce, go to emails. We can click on any one of these. Let's go to the new order notification. Click on it, and we see the email template right down here. You can't edit it directly in here, but it shows here that we can override this template by moving this template from this folder into this folder. And we can click this button to copy it over there if we want to. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to actually do it manually, and that will also show you where to find it after you click this button. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to show you how to do it manually. In the email editor you see here, you can't edit the content of the email, but you can add information. You can add recipients. More people can get this email. You can change the subject line. This is the default subject line here. You can change the email heading. You can add additional content, and you can change the email type. Now these, these values in the curly brackets, those are variables that import the data from WooCommerce. For example, site title and order number, we see in our test email in the subject line. Here's the site title, and here is the order number. So those are variables that are replaced when the email is sent. Now we're going to go to this location here and see all the templates that we have available to us. I'm going to do this using the local finder on my, on my Mac. If you were doing this on a live website, a website on a server, you just log in through either your FTP or your file manager in the cPanel, and you'd go to, this would be the main site content here, go into content, go into plugins, go into WooCommerce, go to templates, and then we have all our templates in here. And the email templates are the ones we want to edit, and I want to do the admin new order. This is the email that was sent to us to notify us of a new order, and I'm going to copy this into the 2020 theme WooCommerce folder, emails folder, and that's the file name. So those folders don't exist yet. We have to make those. I'm going to make those right now. I'm going to go into themes, go to 2020. I'm going to make a new folder called WooCommerce. 
and in there a new folder called emails which is what they have right here WooCommerce and emails I'm going to copy this file into this folder and then that will overwrite that original template file meaning WooCommerce will check in here first it will load this file in this folder if it exists if it doesn't exist it will fall back to the existing template so let's go back to plugins WooCommerce templates emails I'm just going to drag this and hold down option in my Mac which allows me to copy it to somewhere and I'm going to go into the folder we just made right there emails drop it in and here we have our new file I'm going to open this in a text editor that's it right here and this editor highlights the text based on what programming language is used in this case these templates use PHP and the color coding you don't have to worry about unless you're actually doing any kind of PHP programming in our case we're not going to worry about that so this file here the parts that are not grayed out the grayed out parts are comments they're not executed code the parts that are in color are executed code and the parts that you see that are in color on this page those create this email so as you can imagine there's a lot of information being pulled in dynamically because there's really no information here that you see on the email it's all just references to other functions the only thing that you see that's on the email is this part you've received the following order from percent s here it says you received the following order from Bjorn Allpass that's me so I'm going to just test that we are overriding the default WooCommerce emails I'm just going to add some text in here I'm just going to add the word testing save it go back into the dashboard go back to our orders and send the email just like we did a minute ago the resend new order notification come back out here here's our new email and it has the word testing right there so the email template we moved into our theme folder is now overriding the original WooCommerce email template so any information we add into here is now going to become part of the email if you are testing this on a live website which you shouldn't you should do this on some kind of staging site or on a local site or somewhere else because you can create these templates and then just drag and drop them onto your server which would be a lot better but if for some reason you are testing this on a live site and you want to be very inconspicuous instead of adding the word testing to make sure you're doing the override or have the right override selected you could do something like add a comma where there shouldn't be a comma or maybe there should be depending on what the sentence is but you add just a little bit of punctuation a comma or a period or something that doesn't really stand out where if someone sees it they'll be like huh that's weird shouldn't be a comma there or maybe they wouldn't even know if a comma should be there or not but you can then save it send it and then you will see that comma or period or whatever the punctuation is appearing and then you'll know that you're overriding without being conspicuous at all so now I'm going to paste in a piece of code that you can get from the blog link to in the description down below you can just copy and paste it from there into here and this is going to add information to our emails we can add what's been ordered the order items show download links if we want to show the SKU if we want to show the purchase note show an image and change the image size and this code was not created by me I found it by googling it and I found a whole bunch of sites that have the exact same code and sometimes even the exact same blog post so I really don't know who to give credit to but if you google this code it's apparently everywhere so I don't know who to credit so I apologize if you're supposed to receive the credit let me know and I'll add it in the comment down below or something but with this code we can add these cool things to our emails extending the WooCommerce email to have more cells going across for the table is pretty difficult this is a lot easier kind of quick and dirty way of doing it so when I add this in if I save it and resend the email I believe nothing will change let's go back out here check out our new email nothing's changed it took the skew off for some reason the skew was appearing the screw does not appear by default but it was appearing in these ones so you might not see the skew yours might be just like this your email from WooCommerce and now we're going to add in some data from here so if we want to add the SKU to the email we just change the show SKU the dollar sign show SKU to true save it come back in here resend the order notification we do have to resend them every single time and now we have our SKU right here and the SKU is added to the product 
if we go to products and then go to edit, we actually saw the SKU on the product list right there. Here's the SKU right here. But to edit it, we go to edit or to add it even if you don't have it, go to inventory and then add the SKU right here. And we can also add the image. So I'm just gonna change the false to true, save it, go back to our orders and resend the order notification. And now we have our image in here for our product. In this case, it's the baby donkey because we're selling Scooby snacks for donkeys. I was gonna put Scooby-Doo in here, but I thought maybe copyright issues might prevent that. So we have a baby donkey. We can change the size of this image by going to image size. Then you type in array, open and close bracket, and enter pixel width and pixel height, just the number. So if I go 50 comma 50, that's gonna make a square image that is 50 pixels wide by 50 pixels high. So let's save that. So resend. And we have a smaller image right there. And if I ordered multiple products, this would show all of the products and the images that go with that product, which is pretty cool. And we can change also, or we can add the purchase note. This changes to true. I don't believe I have a purchase note added. Let's see if I can add that in. Let's go to products. Nope. Yep. Nope. Let's go to orders and add note. This is the purchase note. Click on add, click on update, resend the notification, come back out here, look at this one, and we don't have the purchase note on there. So that may not be the purchase note that I'm editing here. But when they purchase, if you have the purchase note field on the checkout page, then that will be added as the purchase note, whatever you add in there, and that will show up on here. There are even more things you can add, just Google it, and you can add more parameters in here or even have different functions that add more stuff. And you can probably even expand the table size, which I said earlier would be pretty hard, but I'm sure it's possible. You can edit whatever you want inside of WordPress, so I'm sure you can expand the table size. I've not seen a plugin that does that, but there might be one of those as well. Now that you've learned to add some custom data to a WooCommerce email, check out this tutorial where I show you how to customize the design of an email. You combine those two things and you have highly customized WooCommerce emails. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.